Hello everyone! This is a project that Linda has been working on and I thought I would help her out by showing how I walk through the steps to separate the layers so that we can then add a color to different layers as we go forward. This is the original scan. You can see it's at 100%. It definitely has enough um, definition there to use this for her final file which is only 510 pixels wide and tall which is about um, one and three quarter inches. So if you look at the original, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and it does look a little pixelated, but you can see a little bit of smudging and some um, pen marks along the way, but that's okay. We're not going to worry about that just yet because we're going to do a threshold adjustment and then we're going to separate out these layers and then we'll clean up those marks. So I want to pay attention to this line here because it's a little bit thin here and also we can see there's a little bit of a space here which is absolutely fine um, but just looking for places where we might lose some of the line quality. I think this is the most important place to pay attention to right here. I don't want to go in too large because I want to see how it's going to look at its original size which is 100% 100 uh, 100 here. So then we do image adjustment threshold and you can see you do lose a little bit of the line there. The line's a little bit thin, but that's okay. So then we go up a little bit. If we go all the way up to 210, which was the general starting place, you can see that it's really thick. And we also pick up that pencil line, which we don't need, and we can erase, but it's better to go back just a little bit. We don't want to go so far back that we lose that line, but we don't want to make the lines too thick either. So I think if we go up right about there to about 175. We've maintained those lines. We haven't picked up any extra along the way, except for right here, which we can clean up later. So that's good. So now we have our threshold adjustment, and you can see there's a little bit of the leftover line smudges that we saw earlier, but that's okay. What we're gonna do next is use the magic wand tool. I'm going to select just the M's, like this, and then we'll do layer, new, layer via cut, and then rename this to M. Go back to our background layer. I'm going to select this cute flower here. Layer, new, layer via cut, flower. Go back to the background, and once again, we're going to select these little leaves here. This might be a little bit tricky, so if you need to, you can zoom in. Hold down your shift key while you're selecting the next thing so that you keep everything selected. And we'll go through. And the reason I'm selecting these things together is that these will all be the same color in the final. And I believe I've selected all of them. So layer, new, layer via cut. And we'll call that leaves. And then we actually can delete the background here because we no longer need it. And you can go out. I don't mind working with this um, checkerboard background, but some people find it a little bit difficult to see what it will look like. So you can easily create a new layer by clicking on this little button here and it brings up a new layer. And then you can change this to white and use your paint can and fill that in. And then you can just leave it as is, or you could do layer, new, oops, layer, new, background from layer. And now you have a new background. It's completely white. There's no leftover lines on it. There's no um, black pixels to worry about. So now we can start working on cleaning up each layer. So let's start with our M's. We'll go back to where we saw that little bit of ink smudging. And you can just go in with your eraser tool and clean up those edges. And don't worry, I mean, this is at 300%, so it's going to look pixelated, but it will be just fine when it's printed. And then look for these little stray pixels that go outside of the lines. And look at the next M. You can see a little bit of a ragged edge there. And I just like to smooth this out as much as I can so that you have nice clean lines when you have your finished project. So let's go to the next M. It looks good, nothing there. And the final M is a little bit right here and one little one right there. One little one right there. And then I might smooth this out just a little bit here. And I can see there, that looks great. 
So the M's look good. Um, let's take a look at the leaves. And you can see just a little bit on the leaves here. And then this one here looks great. This one looks great. And that one looks great. There. So now we're ready to start coloring. And what I have done is I've set up a color palette here using Linda's Final, which is right here. And the first one we can do is the M's. And what we want to do is use our eyedropper to select the deep blue, a uh, purple, and then go to our M layer, and then do color overlay, select the color, select our purple, okay, okay. And then the next is the leaves, and we'll do a color overlay. And the leaves were this pretty light green. And then the flower is a little bit different because it's not going to be a color overlay, but it is going to be colored in. So we'll start with the dark leaves, which are green, and just color them right in, just like this. And you can see there's a little bit of white left over. If you want to take the time to go in and color them, you can. The other thing you could do is rather than filling it in right on the flower layer, we go back. You can actually add a new layer that's underneath the flowers and you can use your paintbrush tool. A little bit smaller here. And let's see, we want it a little bit smaller. We can actually color in underneath. And you can do a layer for each color. And so then you could go back Oops, I shouldn't have used a soft paintbrush, but in any event, you can go back and erase around like so. I'm not going to do the whole flower like this, but I'm just going to show you. Like this. And then when you wanted to do the um, next color, you would create another layer and let's see the yellow you would fill it in here but you won't be able to see it until you change the layer to multiply and you want to change this layer to multiply and then you should be able to see your color there there and so you could do it that way, and then you could name this yellow, and you could name this green. That way you maintain the integrity of your original flower here, and you have these different colors. If you wanted to change that color, you very easily could. Um, and you, you know, this would be much more important if you had a much more involved drawing with lots more colors. Um, or you can, again, just select the colors that you want to use and fill them in right on your flower layer. Then you have a little bit of a white around the edge, but that's okay too. And fill this in. And there you have it. And we go back out. And this background layer here, you can either color the actual background or you can add another layer and add this color just in case you wanted to play around with this and see if that's the color you really wanted to use or not. So this is the final file. If you look at it at 100%, um, you can see it does look a little pixelated in the final. But when you print this out at the size that it's going to be printed out at, it should be just fine. And in fact, you can change that up here. If she wanted it to be 510 pixels by 510 pixels, at 300 dpi you could do it this way and just crop it like this down to as close as you'd like it or not like it and there you go there's your final and that's how i would color in this beautiful monogram by linda i hope that helps let me know if you have any questions